the way that you've built this game so far seems to be, like I said, built on preconceptions. So when you build a game on preconceptions, you're allowing your game mechanics to be compared to that of other games that are similar to yours. I'm going without a hat today. Let's just do the fro. Welcome to Games Over Coffee Consulting. People give me their games. I do my best to give feedback on their game design. My name is Devon, and today we're looking at Red Bandana Adventures by Chill Den. Dude, this game, I don't know. I feel like I've seen games like this before, but for some reason I haven't. <laughs> this game is a precision platformer, sort of. Uh, it's a very, very short game. It's a speed running game that was made for the speed jam, speed jam number two. The point of the game jam was to marry speed and momentum with Fadian types of mechanics, meaning Bennett Fadi, it's like Quap or getting over it. In this game, you're down a well and you're trying to get up out of the well using precision platforming mechanics. But at the same time, you'll have a grappling hook. I haven't seen a game that is a precision platformer that uses a grappling hook. I have played a few that have something similar. Spider-Man is obviously the first one that comes to mind. Bionic Commando um, for the NES. Just Cause comes to mind. Celeste 2 for the Pico 8 also has that. I've always thought about these types of precision platformers that are like this one that have like grappling hook mechanics in it and I've never been able to find one and this is one so that's really cool. <laughs> I'm really stoked to, uh, to have played this and I think it's really cool that there's a game that exists that's like this and I'm sure there's other Others. I haven't seen a bunch. So before we get into this, I want to talk a little bit about this game jam. This this jam is so strange to me. They're marrying two different things, right? They're marrying the Fadian type game mechanics along with speedrunning. And what's weird about that is that Fadian mechanics are all about being unintuitive. Getting over it is obvious, right? You're, you're hiking with a hammer, not something that you would typically do in a game. A game like Surgeon Simulator, for example, is completely unintuitive, right? And trying to move your hand very specific overly controlled ways there's games like quap of course extremely unintuitive to to do and the point of these games isn't always to frustrate the player but it's typically to make the player think differently about what they're trying to do and try to master these mechanics in a way that feels unintuitive. But what's really weird about that is <laughs> usually when you when you have speedrunning games, you have a ton of control. We just talked about a speedrunning game not too long ago, Goliath Depot. In games like that, you have a lot of control and you have a lot of expressive mechanics. But what's strange about that is that, you know, Fadian games are all about being unintuitive. So I feel like this jam is taking two different things, you know, this this speedrunning mentality of controlling everything, and then the unintuitive sense of Fadian, you know, weird mechanics, and mushing them together just to see what you get. And it does kind of work in some areas, but the, the weird thing about that is that the top four games in here, in fact, this game right here, Red Bandana Adventures, was number five on the list, so that's really cool, so congratulations for you. The top games on here didn't really feel like speedrunning games. They felt Fadian in nature, but they didn't really feel like they were speedy. They used momentum to their advantage, but again, didn't feel like they were speedrunning. And I know this isn't really about speedrunning, specifically this game jam was about momentum. Each of these games had timers on them, so it was specifically made for some sort of speed running type of thing and then all the comments on every game talked about how fast they could you know do the game that being said this is my main criticism about this game so chill den the developer of this game i'll talk to you via email you wrote in the questionnaire the concept I've developed comes from a game jam where the theme was Fadian. I think it's very difficult to make the player lose a lot of progress without frustrating him and making him give up, and I haven't really succeeded in doing that. So I asked you, I read all the comments in your game jam submission, and most people were put off by the inconsistent controls, but I wouldn't say that's designed frustration. What makes you say you haven't succeeded in your goal? So the developer of this game, Chill Den, you told me that you weren't really sure how to motivate the player to continue upward in this very punishing type of gameplay. But but when I played the game, it didn't seem to be that punishing. In fact, you even have checkpoints in your game. Granted, they're hidden checkpoints, but they're still checkpoints nonetheless. So the game doesn't really have that punishing of a quality to it. And even my slowest time, I was not at all trying to get to the top. I was just messing around with the mechanics and everything. The longest time was eight minutes. Now, my slowest time of me actually trying to get to the end was around four to five minutes. So the game takes anywhere between a minute to a couple minutes to actually complete. So I don't really feel like the person is being punished that much in this game. So that's the reason why I sent you an email in the first place. Instead, I highlighted all the comments in your submission because all the comments were talking about how the controls 
were a bit strange in your game. So after a little bit of back and forth, you and I decided to talk about the controls, the aiming, and the overall objective of the game. One thing that you said bothered you a little bit, you said a lot of players thought they were done with the game when they reached the thanks for playing screen, which makes sense <laughs> because if you're saying thanks for playing, that means that typically means you're done. To stop that, I would just not have that room or maybe have the thanks for playing part after the very end of the game. And the other thing about this ending trying to get out of the well, it's not really that obvious that you need to get out of the well because there's a there's just a very tiny opening at the very top. Nothing in the level design shows me that I need to go upward. Something that I would do to try to uh, guide the player upward would be to create kind of a funnel looking thing. The level starts out pretty wide, but then it starts narrowing as it gets to the top, you know, making the player understand that they need to go upward. But because you have all these side rooms and stuff, it feels like I'm not always supposed to go upward. It's not immediately obvious. So I think doing that kind of funnel action would kind of uh, guide the player into the right type of mindset. So back to the comments about the controls. Now this is what's a little strange about this because again, like I said, this jam is kind of weird because it has emphasis both on the speed and the unintuitive nature of the controls. If you look at the breakdown of this game of Red Bandana Adventures and the scores that they received from the ratings, the lowest scoring part of this game was the gameplay. And all of the comments talked about how the, the game looked really nice, really polished, had great music and sound effects, but the controls they felt like were sloppy, which is weird. You would think that a game with a Fodian nature to it, that's like what the point is, right? To be unintuitive in the nature of controlling it. But this has to do with the experience that the developer wanted to give and the experience that the players were getting. The fact that you're putting the player into a bottom of a well and timing them on their ascent makes it obvious that you're expecting the player to really understand how to play these types of games, which means that the player needs to have some sort of intuitive sense about it. People who play this game probably are already familiar with many platforming games. They intuitively understand wall jumping. They intuitively understand grappling hooks. I think we can all kind of agree that what we want here is an intuitive type of gameplay. So with that being said, what is it about the controls that messed everybody up about this game? There's two things, and in fact, Nanomega, a person who commented on this game, who's also a, a watcher of this channel, thank you for commenting, they mentioned gravity and friction, and those are the two things that I think a lot of people are having trouble with, that and the grappling hook. So the gravity in this game seems to be a lot heavier than most other platformers. Same thing with the friction. It seems like as soon as we step on a hill or as soon as we land on a hill that we're sliding back immediately. And it seems like when we drop from a higher height, when we hit a hill, we then slide even faster. So it seems kind of weird to have a game that's based on ascending to have really strong gravity and near frictionless surfaces, especially when what we're doing is wall jumping. And like I said before, I wouldn't really harp on the unintuitive nature of this type of gameplay if it was meant to be but it doesn't seem like it was. It seems like from all the players we're expecting, it seems like from your gameplay and level design, it seems like from what you've emailed me, that what we want is an intuitive type of gameplay, something that's based on preconceptions of other previous types of precision platformers. So when someone says that the friction is too low or that they say that the gravity is too high, what they mean is that they've played other games that are like this, for example, N++, that has mechanics that are similar to this, but in those games, it has lower gravity. It has higher friction. And the reason why is because it works really well in those types of gameplay. And because this gameplay is similar to those, people expect the same kind of thing. If you look at N++, for example, a lot of that gameplay has to do with, you know, wall jumping and being a, a general ninja, basically. But you have lower gravity. And the reason why is because a lot of challenges have to do with the player trying to dodge things. A lot of times the player has to have a lot of control about where they are at any specific moment. So if you have really high gravity, it's hard to maneuver your character in the air and keep track of where they are at all times. Same with the high friction. There's a reason why in almost every game that has wall jumping that their friction is pretty high when you stick to the wall. It's to give that player the understanding that, hey, you can now jump, you can you can do a wall jump now. So in talking about these things, the, you know, the friction and the gravity, these aren't things that we have to change. You don't have to change anything about your game depending on the type of experience that you want. If the high gravity and the low friction was something that you wanted in your game, then you can have it. You just need to be able to communicate somehow to the player that that's what they should expect when they play this game. Because the way that it's designed right now makes me feel like, as the player, okay, I'm at the bottom of a well and I need to get to the top. I better do what I can to do that. So I'm gonna start playing this game the way that I have other precision platformers. Now, if time didn't matter in this game, and if this game was instead, you know, more linearly kind of designed where we had smaller levels that increased in difficulty, then I would understand 
how this game plays and expect things like high gravity or low friction. You can make any mechanic work as long as you give the player time to understand it. And the way that you've built this game so far seems to be, like I said, built on preconceptions. So when you build a game on preconceptions, you're allowing your game mechanics to be compared to that of other games that are similar to yours. Okay. So that being said, I want to talk about the grappling hook. So this game is very ambitious, I want to say. Grappling hook mechanics are very difficult, I feel like, to get right. I've never made a game with a grappling hook, so I'm not sure, but I do know that a lot of games that have them, you know, Just Cause 2 or Spider-Man or anything like that, has this kind of aiming mechanism that detects the edges every time that you're around the area, and they'll always automatically aim toward something that the player is looking at. So programmatically, the developer always needs to know what the intentions of the player are in order to automatically aim for them and make the player feel as if that's correct. That way you have a player that's playing through the game automatically aim somewhere, shoot, and feel like the, the game is actually doing what they want it to do. So that being done with a 2D platformer that's based on speed, I feel like is a pretty ambitious thing to try. The grappling hook has this strange nature about it. Developer of this game, Chilled In, I told you in an email that I had a specific problem with the aiming. And it's not that the auto aiming was bad, I thought it was fine, but it was really hard to use. And I think the reason why is because the aiming only activates on your downward trajectory from a jump. So in this gameplay, you can see that when I jump, there's no reticle, there's no aiming until I start my descent. And as soon as I start descending, then I see where my hook is going to aim. This makes it really hard for me to understand as a player where that grappling hook is going to be at any given moment. And if I'm trying to do this really fast, which is what you know, you're expecting me to do, then I need to know where that grappling hook is going to be at any moment of the game. So there'll be a lot of times that I'm going for a jump to use a hook and I end up missing that hook because it just didn't appear when I thought it should to stop for the battery. Okay, I have about 18. Oh no, my battery's dying. This new one's dying. There's many times that I would go for a jump to try to grapple and I would imagine a spot where the auto aim is going to be, but because it didn't auto aim until I started to descend, I pressed the key at the wrong time, which meant that I didn't make my jump. So there was many times that that would happen in this game. Now, like every other game that has just any mechanic at all, you can get used to the idea of not having an intuitive sense of control. And after playing this game a whole lot, I did get used to the way that these games mechanics played out. I was able to complete the game in around 30 seconds, which I thought was really cool, but it still has that barrier of entry issue. As soon as someone comes into the game and begins it and it doesn't meet their expectations immediately, then they're just going to leave because that's just how people are. All of this, of course, only depends on the type of experience that you want your game to be. So if you want high gravity, if you want low friction, and you want the hook to not engage until the descent of your jump, you can do all of that. There's, there's nothing wrong with doing any of that. If you want someone to just be able to enter your game and immediately understand the controls before trying to master them, then yeah, you're going to have to change them. Or you're you're going to have to step through the process. One thing that you'll note about all the games that were above yours in this game jam were that they all had very, very simple mechanics. They were really hard and really unintuitive, but all of them had one-click mechanics. If you look at uh, Foolish Fish, that all I had to do was uh, aim with the mouse and click. If you look at that kidney bean game or whatever that was, um, all I had to do was click in order to jump. If you look at the slime game, all you had to do was click in order to go forward or jump. All those things had to do was just one click. And your game has much more complex mechanics. You should just know that that's the type of stuff that you were competing with when it comes to the simplicity of the controls, which is why I think it's really cool that you were able to get fifth in this game jam. I thought that was really awesome. Also, you made another game that had something similar to this game um, I forgot what it was called, but it's an auto runner and it's, it's really stylized. It's really nice looking. You have a, another swinging mechanic in there and that one I think is really, really good. In fact, that one has a lot more simple controls and that one's really easy to figure out and really easy and intuitive to understand. So like I said, it just depends entirely on the experience that you want to give. Whether you want it to be intuitive or unintuitive, that's, that's your decision. I really hope to see this game uh, developed more because I really do like the ideas that you're presenting here. I really want a 2D platforming game that has grappling hook mechanics in it. But I felt like your game, you know, did 
in some points give me that type of flow that I really wanted in a game like this. And there was, I think, another comment that I saw in your submission that said the same thing, that said there were some times that the flow was just perfect. During those times, it felt awesome. There was a time in here that I felt amazing that I was able to wall jump and then grapple and wall and grapple like I was Spider-Man, like I was just, you know, like it was a 2D Spider-Man, basically. It was really cool. So I do really hope to see something like this developed outward. And whether that means you're going to be more intuitive with your controls or have the same controls, but just explain them a little bit better in the beginning, I think that's fine. So thank you so much again for submitting this game. If you are not this developer and you have a game, you can go to this website, gamesover.coffee, and submit your game to me, or there's a link in the description to do that. I also have a Discord where there's other game developers. You can talk to them about your game. You can get feedback if you want. There's some great playtesters in there. We talk about game design all the time, some random stuff. So if you're into like Discord community and whatnot, I do have that. Just go to the link in the description or on the website. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later and I'm going to drink my coffee and I'll try to get a haircut.